This video tutorial is about concatenation and selective concatenation. Uh, so the use case for this is marking and feedback. So some teachers have expressed a little bit of an interest in this. So apparently if you've got 30 odd students or even 100 students, it's hard to write feedback for all of that. So maybe you have comments that you use repeatedly again and again. So you could just write them down and then copy paste them and put them together into one feedback sheet and hand that out saves a bit of time and it's just as effective um, but what if you could then cut the kind of the copy paste step out entirely and code them up so you use one to zero here or well at least one to six comments and you just want to use comment one two and five well you type in one two five and here it has brought in comment number one good use of scientific terminology number two add units and number five add appropriate titles okay that's fine maybe you just want number six and there it has check that you have the right referencing there it says now this formula to achieve this uh, is a little bit complicated um, and you can see it's doing some extra things it is adding a custom comment which is a free text field and a little greeting at the beginning and once you understand concatenation that's actually really easy to put together um, so the main uh, thrust of this is to discuss this bit of code here. What is this doing? This is the one that is generating um, those comments. So I'm going to unpack that little bit of code and rebuild it from scratch on a blank ish sheet. So what I've got is a fruit and veg shop analogy here. Let's scroll back up. What have I done with my mouse? Uh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to play with just this sample text. So apples, oranges, bananas, pears, strawberries, and raspberries. So the first formula I'm going to look at is called concas uh, an eight. Now, if you're on newer versions of Excel, this is technically depreciated and it will give you the little yellow warning symbol, but if you're on older ones, it will work as well. And I'm just going to use it as the example because we need to put in each of these cells individually into it, uh, separated by a comma. And if we return that, great. It's This is what concatenate means. It's taking all these individual strings and bolting them on together into one whole thing. But this is not great, is it? It doesn't have a space between it. So what we're going to do is put a new entry into the concatenate function with a space. There we go. So I'm going to do another one. And it's got to be between the quote marks to make sure that it's a string. And you kind of have to put this all in individually. OK. Fair enough, but there are better ways of doing that. So if you want newer versions, we are going to use concat instead. So same function, but this is the newer version of it because it accepts arrays or ranges. So instead of putting the cells in individually, uh, B2 to B7, return that. There we go. Where we were earlier, apples, oranges, bananas, pears, strawberries, raspberries, all put together. But how do we put that space in? Well, let's put the space at the end. Hasn't worked because what this is doing is it concatenates this range, then adds the space. And you can see if I put a, a, a one on the end there, well, there's a space and a one. So what are we going to do to fix that problem? I'm going to get rid of that one and simply replace that comma with an ampersand. So this joins things together as well. This works the same way as concatenating. It takes a string and puts puts these two things together. And what the concat function is going to do is it's going to look through each of these and add a space on the end of it and then smush them together. And what you can see there, we've got a space between all of our entries. And if I change that to a comma, there we go, we've got a comma between everything. Right, so if you don't have access to that, because I think that's a 365 thing, it's rolled out only in the last year maybe, um, we can use text join. This is a very similar function. Here we need to, it acts exactly the same way as, as concat, but you do need two arguments to put first before you do the actual inputs. We need to tell it what the delimiter is, which is what it's going to separate the uh, text with, which is going to be that comma and space inside the inverted quote marks. And then we wanted to ignore empty cells. It's worth setting that's true. And then input all of that. 
and there we go, largely the same output. Now, if you are on the older versions, you might need to do Control Shift Return for that to input it as an array for me, which you can see with um, these curly brace brackets here. That's an array function. So I'm just going to work with um, text join for now rather than concat, and uh, let's talk about how to make this uh, a bit more selective. What if I only wanted to do apples, oranges, bananas together, and I wanted to change it? So I'm going to put some numbers here for some zeros. So where it is one, I'm going to return this. Where it's zero, I'm not going to return that. Uh, so let's figure out how we're going to do that. Well, I'm going to have to change this slightly. I don't want um, that B237. I want an if statement. So I'm going to do if, open and close the brackets just to set it up, and we'll put it inside here. Now the test for here is, is that column on the right equal to one? So I'm going to drag down that entire column and select it and do equals one. So if that becomes true, uh, what value do I want of true? Well, <coughs> I want this column. And if the value is false, I'm just going to return nothing. You could leave that blank, but I kind of prefer to stick a return a blank space, basically. Uh, now if we return that, control shift return, there we go, apples, oranges, and bananas. Or if I'm on a newer version, I don't need to do the control shift return thing because the whole array formula is kind of being phased out. Now you can see if I change that to one or zero, uh, it changes. In fact, if I change it to anything that isn't one, um, it disappears. So just be a bit careful there that you set this up right. <coughs> okay, so if I set all of these to one, I see them all. If I set them all to zero, they all disappear. So fair enough as a good starting point. So now what if I want to not necessarily do this for each entry. What if I want that code thing? So I'm going to do one, two, three up here just to set up what I want. These are six statements labeled one to six, and I want statement one, two, and six. <coughs> so that's one, two, and six right there. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do find for this. So if I use find, I want to find uh, number one and I'm going to do it within text within that input right there and what you can see it's found it it's found number one and it has found it in the first position and so it doesn't really matter what number this returns um, as long as it's returning any number if I do two it's found it in the third position because it's one two three with that um, with that comma in the middle if I change that to just one two six it's found it in the second position so this technique it doesn't really matter whether you put the commas in or not <coughs> but what happens here is i'm now searching for number two but i've removed two from here it's not there so it's returning an error great that's that's fair enough that that's a starting point now i'm going to delete that two because i'm not going to look for just one anymore i'm going to look for a range so i'm going to input this entire range right here and press return. Now this is where the newer versions do this thing called the spill formula. It automatically detects that you've asked it to loop over something and spills the result down here. <coughs> so it's searching for number one. It's found it. It's searching for number two. It hasn't found it. It's searching for number three. It's found it. Four and five hasn't found it. And then searching for number six. It's found it. In fact, it's found it in the uh, one, two, three, four, five, fifth position. If you do one, two, six, it'll change it to the third position. Okay. So again, it doesn't matter what the number is as long as it's returning a number or an error for this to work. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. We can detect is it an error, uh, and then not. Okay, fair enough. We can try that way. But I'm going to use is number. So. What this is going to do is change those outputs to simply true or false. So has it found number one? True. Has it found number two? False. Has it found number three? True. It's right there. Has it found number four or five? No. Has it found number six? Yes. It's right there. <coughs> and that's kind of it because this is now returning true or false. 
I can copy that, come back up to here and replace this if statement. So that is my logical test. I'm going to paste that in. So I'm going to search for um, the numbers that are in this column in my little code string and then return this where it's true. So I'm going to return that or control shift return apples, bananas, raspberries. That is one, three, and six. If I just want them one, there you go, apples. In fact, I can now delete that spill. It's not needed. In fact, I'm going to drag this up to here. Great, now this is it done. So what I'm going to do is highlight all these numbers, right click the file name, and then type in codes. Okay, that, I'm just going to check if it's in the main manager. Yep, it's because that didn't work when I was testing this out earlier. Right, right click that, the file name, and I'm going to call this, oops, okay, that. So now, instead of this range, this A7, I'm going to put in codes, there it is, let's make sure it's the right one, and I'm going to return fruits. There we go, same thing, um, but I've now named it. So now if you want to deal with dynamic named ranges, you could set that up as one. Um, I'll not cover that here. Um, and, or if you want to just leave it as is, you will need to make sure that you put the, um, the dollar signs to make them absolute references. And what I can do here is maybe I want one, two, three, four, five and six, well I'm going to duplicate these, control D, or drag it down, uh, and there we are, we're now generating strings just from this. I can delete this, it's not needed anymore, that was just to illustrate another way of doing it. Uh, so I've got these codes and it's now turning into strings, I can then change this to whatever I like. Uh, Pick another fruit, maybe melons. There we go. It's it's updating automatically and dynamically down there. And if I do change these, it changes them as well. Now, if I want to add more to this list, I'll have to make sure that my named ranges are correct and these ranges are correct. But other than that, uh, that is how you can turn a code into a concatenated string.